ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار my dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy quran إن الشيطان كان إن الشيطان لكم عدو فاتخذوه عدوا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكون من أصحاب السعير that indeed the shaytan to you is an enemy so take him as an enemy indeed he calls to his followers to be among the people of hellfire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a command and an order to understand the shaitan know the shaitan and to behave in a manner that we understand and know the shaitan if anybody has any enemy in this world anybody that is plotting against them and planning then they would take measures to protect themselves from this enemy but yet most of us when it comes to the shaitan we are heedless we behave in a way that we are completely heedless of his plans we allow him to go step by step and step by step until he leads us astray or until he causes us to ruin our relationships with others or until he causes us to ruin our rewards for our actions before they have started or even after they have been completed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashran thaliha that whoever comes whoever comes on the day of judgment having preserved their deeds then they receive 10 times their reward we receive 10 times their reward as a reward for preserving our deeds and saving them until the day of judgment because we can so easily cause our reward to vanish the shaitan attacks those who do good the shaitan attack, attacks those who are heedless the shaitan is on a constant front whatever front he fails with with us then he would try a different approach so the believer is the one who knows he is being constantly attacked by the shaitan and is aware of those attacks when they do happen so what does the shaitan do what where is the shaitan coming from why is the shaitan attacking us in such a way to understand the shaitan we have to understand the reasons that led him to do what he did we know that iblis was one of the it was the highest creature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides the angels he was the most honored to the level that he was in the the the, the presence of the most honorable angels in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was present when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created an even better creation in adam alayhi salam so what did this do to iblis a lot of times people will tell you the reason because the reason that led him astray was pride and that is part of it but the originating reason that caused him to transgress was he denied the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Adam alayhi salam aba wa stakbar he denied and then he became arrogant he denied what does denial of the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others mean and how does this influence us in our lives 
Why, when we see something that somebody else has that we like, we say, Masha Allah, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed. We admit that what they have is a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to bless them with. We understand where the blessing is come from, or coming from. We do not compare ourselves or value ourselves based in comparison with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and has given others. So when we see something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given someone else, that we like, we say, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed. And there is no ill will in our heart after that. But then the shaitan, he refused to have this mindset. When he saw Adam alayhi salam, a more noble creation than himself, he denied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving him a blessing that he did not give himself. He denied this blessing and he became jealous. And this jealousy caused him to be arrogant. It caused such a hatred in himself. When he developed this mindset that he started comparing himself with Adam السلام, and comparing the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Adam السلام, to himself to such a great extent that he forgot the great blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. And by his arrogance and by his pride, he caused the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him and the honor he had given him to vanish and disappear. This is what jealousy does. This is what hatred does. And it stems from not recognizing what, what uh, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean. Not recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give others and not give ourselves. That this is what caused him to first deny and then become arrogant. And then after that become arrogant. Why would he become arrogant? He became arrogant to find some kind of way to think that he is better. And he's trying to convince himself that he is better. And he said that, uh, He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ When Allah ordered him to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam, he refused to do so and he said, أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ I am better than him. You created me out of fire and you have created him out of dirt. So this act of arrogance was enough to dispel and to make vanish every single good that he had done before and to make him cursed. And we fall into the same traps and the shaitan attempts to make us fall into the same traps to make us lose that blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us and that honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us to make us a human being, to make us the son of Adam, to make us the, cre the creation that we are. He makes us behave in such a way that that blessing is completely not thanked for. That blessing is not even appreciated. And that we fall into the same pride and arrogance that he fell into himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to take him as an enemy. His hatred started from many, 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 many years ago. His hatred started from our first grandfather, Adam alayhi salam. And since then he has been looking at us and watching us and understanding us and understanding our ways and knowing the plans that he can use to get us into hellfire. So you can look at the various different plots of shaitan. Whatever those plots may be and whatever direct effect that they have, he has long-term plots and short-term plots. But all of them are so that he can lead us astray and make us unthankful. When he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would be whispering to us, he said you will find that very few of them indeed are thankful. That the shukr, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ That the shukr would be taken away from us. You would find only very few of them are thankful. And this is his goal, to make us heedless from our, uh, our true purpose in this world. To make us heedless from the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us in Islam. And to guide us into hellfire. <inaudible> his ultimate goal is to bring us into hellfire with him. So that is what, why he is against us and that is his goal. So what are the means that the shaitan uses to try to attack us? One thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds very sacred in our deen of Islam. And one thing that the shaitan attacks above everything else. 
is the family and the husband and the wife. People sometimes they ask me, you know, I'm, I, and this is for a good reason. I'm a younger person and sometimes I do, and I'm not married myself, and I do marriage counseling in some instances. And then people, they say, oh, it is interesting that you do it and you're not married. But then subhanAllah, if you look at the ways, that if, you, if you understand it in a sense, that any problem in our relationship is something that the shaitan has planted and the shaitan is causing to uh, divide people, then you would understand subhanAllah, how one small thing that someone does wrong in a relationship, one small mistake that someone makes, or even a mistake that someone doesn't make, an assumption that is planted in one individual, this could cause people to dissolve their marriage based upon this. People, they dissolve their marriage starting from a problem that maybe somebody overcooked some food. Or maybe somebody said a comment that the other person did not like. Or maybe this or maybe that from the smallest things to cause misunderstanding and to cause fighting and to cause discord. Because once the family structure is destroyed, then the shaitan has accomplished his greatest task. That is the shaitan's greatest task, to separate between the husband and the wife. And that is the greatest thing uh, that, that the shaitan, uh, 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 the reason the, and the motivation that caused him to teach the, the, the uh, sihr to the human beings. وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ And that they learn from them what they can separate between the man and his wife. And when the shaytan holds his court, when he has, he sits upon his throne, and the shayateen, they come to him and they, and they tell him, I did this and this and this, and he would honor them based upon the, the kind of evil that they had caused. The one he would honor the most, and the one he would thank the most and praise in front of the other shayateen is the one who successfully caused a husband and a wife to leave one another. So understand that in this sense, in our relationships with others, in our closest relationships, the shaytan will attack there. He will attack in our other relationships. He will cause a family to have problems with one another. And then if that doesn't work, he will cause a, a two brothers in Islam, two people who they are related only through la ilaha illallah, to cause uh, problems among those people. He will cause discord wherever he can, to separate between, uh, between people, and he will use very many methods to do so. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us that the shaytan would cause, uh, his goal is to separate between people. His goal is to attack people. His goal is to s fragment the society. So that one brother would come and look at his brother. And then they would have such ill feeling that they would want to turn away from that person. That is, and we are allowing the shaitan to succeed within ourselves. It is not just the, the, uh, the, thing, the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden or the things that are haram that the shaitan whispers for us to do. When we think of the whispering of the shaitan, oftentimes we think about those things that, that the shaitan whispers, oh, if we think about in the last 24 hours, when has the shaitan whispered to me? We would think about those times when the shaitan was trying to tempt us to do some kind of evil. But the shaitan, he has many more strategies than that. The shaitan, starting with causing discord in a family, causing discord among people, causing people to assume evil of one another. This is one strategy that the shaitan uses, causing people to assume evil, causing people to become jealous of one another, causing people to have resentment to one another. And in fact, if the shaitan succeeds in causing a man to have resentment towards his wife, or a woman to have resentment towards her husband, that is, is the greatest success that he can have. And subhanAllah, if you study what causes uh, marriage to dissolve and what causes divorce, the number one predictor for divorce is contempt between a husband and his wife. Is contempt, is, is a feeling that you want to put the other person down or belittle the other person, or, not th or, or, or think of the other person as below you in some kind of way. And to not care about that person. 
This is the, the number one predictor, a predictor of divorce, and this is the number one thing that the shaitan tries to do. So how do we protect the our households, first of all, from the shaitan? We allow every single means for the shaitan to enter our household and to enter our lives, and we do not protect ourselves from the shaitan. And then we complain that we have these problems in our household. We complain that it is difficult to wake up for Fajr. We complain that there is a, a, a fighting between the parents and the children and between the parents themselves. When a person comes to enter their home, the shayateen, they are waiting there to enter along with him. And if the person says, when he enters, if the person says, uh, 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 enters the house with mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or uh, says Bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala rabbina tawakkalna and then says Assalamu alaykum then the shaitan would tell his people there is no place for you to sleep and the person says Bismillah while he's eating, before he eats then the shaitan would say there is no food for you and there is no place to sleep but if on the contrary a person enters his house and doesn't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enters in a bad mood you could say or enters in whatever mood and enters the house then the shaitan would enter along with him and the when the shaitan is invited into a household then you will see the problems that arise because of that because we are not protecting ourselves from the shaitan we are not placing a barrier from him in entering our lives and entering our households and, and entering into our relationships and then when a person would eat and they would not mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the shaitan would say, Adraktumul Mabita wal Asha. You have found a place to sleep for the night and you have found dinner for yourselves tonight. So then the shaitan would be in there while we are in there. And we are leaving and he is with us. And in every single moment of our lives, he is with us. So this is just a small idea or glimpse into what it means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the shaitan is indeed an enemy to you, so take him as an enemy. Indeed, he calls for his people to be among the dwellers of hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. الحمد لله كما ينبغي لجلال وجهه وعظيم سلطانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. My dear brothers and sisters, in order for us to realize the 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 path that the, the shaitan takes to attack us, we need to look at the different verses that is mentioned in the Quran and pay attention to every single word. We said that the shaitan he tries to attack us by the same means that caused him to be cursed. And he tries for us to be in hellfire just as he was in hellfire because of those things. What did he say when he was arrogant? He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Do you, uh, you see this, this, this thing, this uh, uh, individual that, that you have honored over me? Brothers, please move forward, inshallah, make room for your brothers. SubhanAllah, this was the way that he viewed uh, uh, Adam because of this jealousy, because of this pride. Except Iblis, he, was, he first denied and then he became arrogant. He, be, he denied and was arrogant and he became among the disbelievers. But then does the shaitan come to us and every time he comes to us we know he is coming to us because he is telling us to do something evil. No, the shaitan can come to us and tell us to do something that we think is good. And we might think we are doing something good. And this, subhanAllah, is an extremely effective method of, of, of persuading anybody to do anything. In, in, uh, in psychology they teach that there is one, uh, all of us we have a certain uh, kind of, of, of thinking that we have certain things that we accept and we believe and if somebody tells us those things we agree and there are certain things that we are in the, our gray area we can go this way or we can go that way and there are certain things that no matter what anybody tells us that we, we will never agree with them 
And the people who are the most stubborn, that gray area is smaller and smaller for themselves and they refuse to believe anything that is not uh, in accordance with what they already think. But then, a way that they teach the best way to persuade somebody of something is to tell them something that is closest, that is at the edge of the things they already accept, but is the closest level to the things that they are unsure of or uncertain of. And then you, that line will move. And then you attack that area, and that line will move, and then you attack that area, right? Uh, an example, a person, he wanted uh, his wife to move to uh, a place in the country. So then he first started with, you know, the suburb, and then they didn't find a place there. And then once she had accepted that place as a reasonable place, then he went to the city that is next to it. And then they couldn't find a place there. And then step by step, they ended up looking for a house in the country. And then it, when if he had told her in the beginning, we should move there, she would have never accepted Right? And we know how this happens. And we see this happening to ourselves many times. There is something that at one point we said we would never do. We said we would never do. You look at a person who is involved in some kind of major sin, we say we would never do that. Because the shaitan, he doesn't come to us and tell us to do that major sin immediately. He, he uses steps. Right? And do not follow the, the footsteps of the shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the shaitan as what? An, an enemy who leads people astray. Right? An enemy who leads people astray. And you follow one step and then he will take you to the next step. He will come to you with something that you will accept. And then you will build upon that and build upon that until you have gone completely astray. Right? And what is the proof of this? What did he say? When he came to Adam alayhi salam, our, uh, uh, the, the first uh, grandfather of ours, right? We have that, those same genes descended down from Adam alayhi salam. We have that same style, the same thing that worked with Adam is what is working with us. The shaitan came and said, and he swore to Adam alayhi salam, and he swore to Hawa alayhi salam. He swore to Hawa that, that what? إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاسِحِينَ He swore to uh, Adam uh, and Hawa that I am advising you. Indeed, I'm, uh, I'm only telling you what is best for you. That you will think you're doing something that is good for you and doing something that is good for you and doing something that is good for you. So if your basis is what you believe is good for you, and that is, the, that is what uh, judges your actions in this world, and you do those things that seem acceptable to you, and your, and your judgment is not based upon the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showed, whether it seems acceptable or, or desirable to you or not, then there's a problem in our iman. Now, subhanAllah, that is one of the, the strategies of the shaitan that he uses. Now, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about the shaitan? And what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the day of judgment? أَلَمْ أَعْحَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُرُوا الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُمٌ مُّبِينٌ That didn't I make it a promise with you, O son of Adam, that you do not worship the shaytan. That you do not worship the shaytan. That what is a deen? What is a worship? When our whole life is revolving around that thing, if we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our whole life should be revolving around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we worship our desires, then our whole life will revolve around desires. If we worship the shaitan, then every single plan that the shaitan has against us, we will be falling a prey to it. Right? Whether he is telling us to leave the best of actions, whether he is telling us to leave prayer. People who leave prayer, they all have rational reasonings for why they're leaving prayer. And it's not as if that they were praying with their five prayers and then all of a sudden just stopped entirely. The shaitan comes step by step. Be aware of the steps of the shaitan. And then it becomes to the point where a person is worshipping the shaitan. Right? If a person is going, and even when it comes to, to engaging in acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. When it comes to engaging, engaging in acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, then sometimes a person becomes aware, maybe the shaitan is, is causing me to do this. And still, uh, persists upon what they are doing. Right? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the believers? That those, the believers, those who have taqwa, 
Those who have God consciousness, if, as soon as they realize that this is the shaitan making me do this, they remember and then they, they, they see. As, then they see the reality. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it. Because the shaitan has pulled something over their eyes. But then there are those who say, okay, the shaitan is the one who is causing me to do this and trying to lead me astray. But then they're, desi they're over so overcome with their desire that they continue upon what they are doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save and protect us from that. When the evil has become clear to them, then they continue upon what they are doing. Even, and they do not ever see the reality of it. Look at how the shaitan can, can get to us. Look at how the shaitan can deceive us. Look at the level of deception that, that the, the shaitan can get to us. Right? And then at that point, then it is as if that person is worshipping the shaitan. They know the shaitan is helping them along this path. And in a way, they come to appreciate that help of the shaitan. As if, and they know they are doing something evil. And they continue to persist upon that evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this. And the shaitan, subhanAllah, this is something to be extremely aware of. That the shaitan would cause us to go down a path. The, 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 it starts with one step. So we need to be aware of what is that one step for ourselves. What is that thing that the shaitan will, cause, uh, will, uh, will use to lead us astray? And then one thing to keep in mind. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refer uh, to those who practice one of the most common major sins that is going on today? Which is the uh, usury and interest. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those people الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَا لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِينَ يَتَقَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِ That those who they are involved in the, the consumption of usury, of interest. Right? Whatever excuse there may be. لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِينَ يَتَقَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسِ They will not rise, they will not do anything. They will not do anything. Everything that they will do, it is as if the shaitan is, is, is possessing their body. Their thoughts become occupied with shaitan. If you look, for example, I looked at one tafsir, uh, and, and this was a, a person, he, he put it in front of me. Uh, and this is not something that people should seek out. That was made by the, the uh, Qur'anists. The people who claim that forget about Muhammad Sallallahu there was a new prophet after him in the Qur'an. Is, uh, is, is uh, the, the miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we follow only the Qur'an. And then you read the tafsir, that whoever wrote that tafsir, that false tafsir, that false translation, that extreme warped translation of the Qur'an, they, their brain was structured in a different way, subhanAllah. They were looking at it and interpreting it and looking at everything in a way that, that was in accordance with their desires and with their agenda. SubhanAllah, this is the way that we come to see the world. Our cognition begins to change. Look at the situation, of, and I'll conclude with this inshallah, of Adam alayhi salam. When he uh, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then uh, the, their uh, private parts were exposed, and they immediately rushed to cover themselves. And then Adam alayhi salam immediately began to do istighfar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That is what we need to do once we realize we are doing something wrong. But then if a person persists upon a disobedience and persists upon shamelessness, then that shame will go away. Right? As we mentioned the psychological idea of cognitive dissonance. Of cognitive dissonance. That when a person, they, they, they come they, to do an action that they are uncomfortable with. Maybe it is a wrong action that is at that edge that we talked about. And then, that instead of changing their behavior, it is much easier for them to change their action. So many people, they, uh, to change their mentality. So many people, they change their mentality about their sin and come to accept their sin. And then that leads them down a path and down a path and down a path until a person is involved in adultery, until a person is ungrateful and disrespectful to their parents, until a person has left the prayers. Right? Look, a person who prays Fajr in, in a group, then, in Jama'ah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, uh, uh, would place them under his protection. A person who misses Fajr, the shaitan is urinating in their ear. Right? A person, any, the Prophet ﷺ said, any three people that are together in a town or in a house or whatever it may be, and there is no congregation prayer being prayed, then, uh, then uh, a close meaning of the hadith is if the shaitan has taken uh, hold of them.
then that the shaitan has become victorious in that instance. There's the, the, the opposites that, are, that we see over here. Following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and placing that as our limit of what is acceptable or not. And also, uh, and on, on the other side, doing what we think is acceptable and what we think is right, but may not, what may not necessarily be what is found in our deen. Right? What was I saying? Those who they commit uh, this interest or usury and, and they are the ones who are uh, uh, in, in uh, consumption of this, then they do not rise as if, except as if the shaitan is in complete control of them. Because that is one sin that is 70 so times worse than zina. Right? Worse than uh, fornication. SubhanAllah. To uh, uh, take usury, to take interest. That it is that serious of a sin because then you're allowing, then you're digging yourself in a hole because this is something you will have to be involved in in a while. And once you're involved in a long-term sin and you return to that sin and return to that sin and there is no, uh, 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 there is no istighfar, then your whole measure of what is right and is wrong gets completely destroyed. And you are allowing yourself to be going down that path that the shaitan is leading you down. And you have taken that step and that fatal step. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from those things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our families from the shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our wealth from the shaitan. Uh, look uh, at uh, subhanAllah, uh, even if somebody eats something that is haram, then they're allowing the shaitan to take over in uh, their body. Because if they put it in their tongue, their tongue curses them. Their throat curses them, their stomach curses them. And even as, as it is coming out of that part of the body, then that part of the body itself is cursing that person for allowing themselves to eat haram because they are letting the shaitan take a hold of them and conquer them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Allahumma alayna haqqa haqqa wa rizukna tiba'a. Wa alayna al-baatila baatila wa rizukna ishtinaba. Allahumma aqsinna na min khashayatika ma ta'ulu bihi bainna wa bainna ma'asiyatik. Wa min ta'atika ma tabalighuna bihi jannatak. Wa min al-yaqini ma tuhuwin bihi alayna wa sahib al-dunya. Wa ta'ala Allahumma bi asma'ina wa absalina wa quwatina abada min ahiyyatina. Wa ja'al bulwarithu minna. Wa ja'al thaqrana ala man zalamana. Wa sulna ala man aadana. Wa la taj'al musibatana fi dinina. Wa la taj'al dunya akbar ammina. ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا برحمتك يا رحمن الرحمين يا عزيز ويا كريم يا رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين وصل الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه والائه يزلكم ونذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقيموا الصلاه